roll out of bed. <laughs> Not one. Oh, I'm just going to go back to bed. Everyone, roll initiative as you roll out of bed. There's a massive plate of pancakes in front of you. Who shall acquire the first pancake? It will be the warmest. And thus take the best of butter and syrup. <laughs> this is an important decision. Where's my character sheet? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, okay then. Keta, not quick to act. My face is buried in Lee's chest. <laughs> Felzy, less quick to act, but better than Keta. It's it's almost like the her face is probably also buried in the chest. I am buried beneath wife. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fair enough. If we're doing this, <laughs> jokingly, me... but sure. Well, if it's jokingly, I'm not gonna do it under my character name. <laughs> Trevinche's initiative is higher, so he still gains pancake advantage thus far. You know what? That's fair. He uh, is. Uh, I rolled one. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna get back to doing the link bomb now. Brimstone has pancake advantage. Brimstone is out of bed first. However, it's pancake, she doesn't care. Brimstone is a soldier. Pancakes are like one of the big soldier comfort time meals. Yeah. Like when you actually have grain rations and such. I think Brimstone would appreciate a good pancake. Yeah, but I feel like you just eat some... No no with... butter, no syrup. <laughs> yeah. Just a nice, dry pancake. Hey, if a pancake's Which... made well, it just having one plain is actually quite tasty. Yeah, but at that point, you're just eating bread. Correct. The Which issue is... I'm not saying there's an issue. I'm just saying I feel like Brimstone would at least want like some some chili or some stew to dip it in. Basically, take a pancake like Nan. What was that armored? Basically, treat the pancakes like Nan. Nan cakes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. I feel like historically pancakes were typically eaten savory. I don't feel My like God. they were normally a sweet thing. I just realized something though. So, America's ruining ruining everything. We do like our sugar. What did you realize, Andy? I mean, it could be it, given that Captain grew up in a military family. She probably it's either she. Her dad figured out how to make sweet pancakes for her, or it was she grew up a lot with just pancakes or just another form of bread that you can dip into things. What do you mean you eat them with syrup? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean... How would you do that? <laughs> that seems like a fiend of sugar. She probably did it herself. <laughs> Down with the syrup and just... Honey. No, it's more likely honey. <laughs> no, syrup would be more likely. Really? Yeah. You could live around a giant forest. Yes, also literally... trees made out of iron. They're not made out of iron. They have they iron have the... in them. Yeah. I would not think that would make very good syrup. Yeah, also, know. those aren't the only trees. <laughs> I'm picturing Ketsa having a, a maple sword. A sword made out of a maple tree from the iron forest. Oh, I thought it was just a sword made out of hardened maple syrup. <laughs> well, it actually is maple iron. Well, they're not no. they're not maple trees that draw the iron up. They're actually more akin to like sequoias and redwoods. Yeah, like the old old Fucking giant huge. trees. I'm just picturing yeah. like a maple tree in the same area that did not as well as everything else, so <laughs> considered a really good iron. <laughs> now I'm wondering if you can actually get syrup out of other trees other than maple trees. Probably. <laughs> It would probably be a and lot harder, though, because maple trees, you just 
basically tap them like a keg and put a bucket underneath it, and it just drips out. Yeah, they they very sappy. Uh, just like people. Yeah. <laughs> to I use mean, to use a wrong. disgusting to use a disgusting word, maple trees are very moist. It's accurate. They are, yeah. Uh, I love maple syrup. Oh well, I love blueberry syrup. What's your favorite syrup, people? <laughs> So you like so you like so you like your syrup secondhand. Yes. <laughs> through through someone's blood sugar. I mean, honestly, there are multiple different options for people syrup. We're not going to address what those options could be. Correct. Yeah. Okay, but I have all the link bombing done. So if we want to actually go through and introduce ourselves, we can now. Yeah. Oh, that's me. <laughs> no. I, yes, I am Andy. And I play the sad baby who is just tired. Very tired. Hello, I am Robert. I am tired. I play Da Vinci, who is tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping we can reinvigorate some energy into everyone today, even if it is only fleeting. Eh, we'll just have to wait and see. Mm, on that note, hello everybody, I am Danny Boop de Boop. I'm sure that people know me by various names online by now. Uh, and I play Morgan, who just is... It's been a lot the last few days in game. <laughs> mm. Or actually just the last day. Oh yeah, very much so in the last day, but last few days yeah, in game in general. Yeah. Last 24 hours have been the most stressful. It's been like four weeks of not niceness. Yeah. Hello, I am Beltros, I play the Felzy, and I'm doing victory laps. Felzy, the only one having a good time. We did committed murder, we committed murder, and we got away with it, yeah! What well, do you mean? It, made... it was fine. Fair enough, Brimstone's fine with it. This is the one time Brimstone and Failsy agree that something was a good time. Uh. And I got to brain. That's more questionable. <laughs> Useful, though. I guess. Introducers of it. Uh... I am Mathurja. We're just a gaggle of energy today, folks. Just a gaggle. <laughs> I honestly hope you weren't expecting anything different. I hope maybe one day you'll actually be excited. It will be on that day and that day alone that I know you actually enjoy playing this game. Uh Until then, I'll continuously doubt and be and be curious, concerned, and questioning. I think the only way you'll get that is if you kill Brimstone and bring on the Soviet Squidward. Squidman, not Squidward. Okay, Squ Squidman. I just know the character exists. I don't know the name. Armand, I see what you said, and that would only be relevant if it was, if that was a consistent thing. That last episode certainly is not something I feel Myth would ever do. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway. But yes. And hello everyone, I'm Ash, the Dio. I try to keep this gaggle of folks on track and along a path that they set for themselves. Sometimes we take weird twists and turns, but 
I try to keep things moving in a positive direction, no matter what happens. I try, at least. I try. Any hoozle. We're gonna pick back up where we more or less left off, but the next morning, after you all have had some time to properly get yourselves rested after a particularly arduous fight. Uh, I'm pretty sure Keta, Keta and Lee, Dravinche, and then Failzy and Jamel stayed in the tavern, or stayed in the <laughs> inn. Did anyone else yes. stay in the inn? Um, with two two rooms and a suite, uh, unless I'll. No. I thought you bought three rooms and a suite, so four rooms in total. Uh, no, it was two rooms and a suite. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that would answer that then. Oh, right, then. So the yeah, two, under- so rather the group of you who stayed in the actual inn itself, uh, you awaken in the morning to the rich smells of, per what we were discussing before game, it's relevant now, uh, the rich smells of buttery pancakes filling your nostrils, as well as the slight overtones of sweetened honey to go along with them. I had to partake of pancakes, but without uh, any uh, syrup or not not syrup, but uh, not any butter, not but not butter, honey. I cannot think tonight. <laughs> I can't honey butter. Anybody? Ah, uh, honey butter, the best topping for biscuits. Crunch. Yeah, especially buttermilk biscuits. Yeah. Yeah. And she's just having hers with plain old butter. Fair enough. Fellsy, and though Fellsy's gonna uh, have a uh, side of brain with her pancakes in the common area probably not okay I Maybe have to make like sure if yeah like, probably she'll not probably, uh, she'll probably wait till later have a snack later okay I mean I do legitimately have to ask with you Fellsy because I can never be certain if you're just gonna whip out a brain in the middle of a ballroom and start munching. I mean, Failsley's done things on equivalent level of questionable in time. Right. Uh, what about Brimstone and Morgan? I mean, sure. I mean, there's nothing stopping you guys from going in the inn to get some breakfast as well. Yeah. I mean, might as well. Yeah. All right, so pretty much the whole party is gathered together at their at a single large morning breakfast table. From the tone of everyone's reactions, probably fairly somberly and mostly silently eating pancakes. As Kat is eating, she just kind of looks for and goes, "I have no shoes. I only have socks, and they're my winter socks." There's nothing wrong with being barefoot. That was easy. You don't have to feed for uh, it. <laughs> don't you have some mud, some money in your pa- in your bag? No, they took it. <laughs> I had well, my money on me. I guess I will go shopping later. I can take um, you to go shoe shopping. Hmm. Go tomorrow. Okay. I have small feet. Mm. Uh, All right. I don't see why that oh. is a problem. I'm sure there are many people with small feet that would be able to easily enable you a nice set of shoes. That and here, I'll cover it. Uh, da Vinci is going to slide a pouch across the table to get her. And I just kind of open up the pouch just so she can get an idea of what he slid her. A bunch of platinum coins. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, add, add, uh, 
the 15 platinum coins. She starts coughing and just... <laughs> Okay, what the hell? Drink water, drink water, I, don't I, choke I, on the pancake. Sip the water. Sip it. <laughs> I just so exhausted. Uh, no. Jamel gave her a potion of vitality on the previous day, which cleared out her exhaustion, though she was still physically in need of rest. Okay. Which she has actually gotten now. Yeah, it's more so, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she's more mentally exhausted than she is physically exhausted at this point. Just so I check, because I thought she had, like, several levels of exhaustion. Yeah. If I potion had seven, I'd be dead. <laughs> several. He several. said several. No, but yeah, the potion of vitality instantly clears you of all levels of exhaustion. How did you get platinum? We uh took a job from Granum. Country of the dude. Hmm. The country yes. or the man? Your grandfather. I, f I feel like that is technically a yes answer. Well, then you can get a you can get a job from the king, and it doesn't have to go through grand. This is him. No, well, it was directly from. So. Hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't do too well, and Raider exploded. What? Excuse well, me, what? Was, there was a ritual. Said by agents of my father. We thought we stopped it, but we didn't. The yeah, clock tower was all so. set in, fell into a lake of blood, which was contained, but... It did remove the protections on the bastion from oh, teleportation. Don't worry, keep uh... in mind. Keep in mind that uh, had we not intervened, the entire city would have been affected. It was. Yeah. We didn't completely succeed, but we at least kept the worst from happening. Yes, I saw a bit of what happened. It was. Uh, staggering to see the Bastion in that state. Yeah. Is Granddad okay? Yeah. I mean, other than being shaken that something like that happened, but kind of hard not to got, you, For how you guys described it, he seemed angry. I mean, uh, it's a direct attack on his people. Yeah. I ain't seen Granny yeah. get mad too often, but that's that's a good way to do it. We at least set him up with experts who can help restore things back to the way they were. Yes, that is actually why I'm with you all now. Yeah. It is very lovely to see you again, Jamal. It is very lovely to see you again as well, Geta. Though I will say I wish it was under better circumstances. I mean, I wish I wasn't kidnapped either, but, you know, things happen. I mean, kidnapped is one thing. I've dealt with kidnapping before. I got a wife because of kidnapping. <laughs> Except I was the kidnapper in that case. Uh. Liberator? More so? It's technically the same thing. I mean... Yes, perspective. I mean, I guess it was from... The gold, so. It is still technically kidnapping, but it is kidnapping for good. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna argue that point. I don't think you have any opposition to it, Fairzy, did you? Oh, he just hugs Jamel. It's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I figured, I figured it's almost like instinctual, just like, no, this is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> just wraps an arm around her. Yes. Um. I heard a little. I heard a little bit about what the guards were talking about. About a uh, warehouse full of, full of other guards passed out. Yeah. Yes, uh, that I is think... 
ongoing investigation. I think I know might know about that. Yeah. I, uh... um, well, before we start making you relive harsh memories, we should get you shoes. Yeah, do you have some scissors? This is a lot more skin than I'm used to, like, covering. I want scissors. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. Do you want me to pull your sleeves off? Um, no, I want that. The, I then she kind of motions towards like her stomach area. <laughs> top top. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jamel stands up and walks around. <laughs> oh, there's a big lady. <laughs> yeah, and she basically just pokes her finger into your shirt and then drags it along, and the fabric just tears. Oh, let's go. I have very sharp claws when they want to have them. <laughs> You know, whenever she does that to me, every fails even in the public place. <laughs> I wonder why that's different, Failsy. Anyways, I think I'm gonna have to get oh. a new sweater when I get back home. But you know, <laughs> actually, um, you all stay here. I'll be right back. I just remembered something. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. She just pats Kit on the head. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Guys, I have a tail. Yes. Yeah. You, you see that? And I think everyone's got a tail except Vinci now. No, Broomstone doesn't have a tail. <laughs> yeah. No. And Lee, Lee doesn't have a tail. Are able to actually double check that fact? Lee looks at his own butt. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have a tail. Right now, at least. Okay. When can you develop a tail? I don't know. Magic's weird. I don't know if one of you guys is gonna make me have a tail at some point. Well, a tail can be useful. You could turn me into a pigeon or something and then I have a tail. I mean... Yeah, I can't really do nothing like that. I can't either. But I can grab things with my tail. Elsie's just <laughs> thinking back to uh, the the Levani Lee standing on his tail, <laughs> thinking it was still legs. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he bottles his flippers, or the the end of the tail. Yeah, I, he was slithering like a snake, but still slapping the flippers as if they were feet. <laughs> Turning to walk in like a weird fusion of a snake and a seal. Yeah. I could find a way to get you a tail if you want one. I am born without a tail. I feel like it would get in the way. Bravo, Besides, yeah. if I had a tail, I feel like I wouldn't want a pair of pants either, and that's apparently a no-no. Well, we could put a hole in your pants. In Lee the looks back. like he's having. In the back. Lee looks like he's having an idea. Does that mean I could have holes in my shirt so I could wear shirts? <laughs> oh, that'd be directly over my place. Where are you putting extra holes? Yes. yes! I already make sweaters that have holes like that. You would just have to move it down where you feel it would be comfortable to have that hole. They're called keyhole sweaters. I must look into this. Uh-huh. There we go. Lee's ha Lee has the expression on his face of fourth dimensional math. <laughs> you can see the, the, the equations going around his head, but it's, you know, two plus two equals, uh... <laughs> no, it's, it's, two pl it's two plus two equals titties. <laughs> two plus two equals math. Yeesh. What does that actually equal? I don't know. Four. It equals four. I can do my additions and my subtractions. I do tally counting. You do more That's right. <laughs> Some of it. 
<laughs> Sound cards. I know five fives is twenty five. I mean, sure. I wonder, I wonder what Tamil's getting. Do you know the mathematical formula to double infinity? Do you, Fancy? You just yeah. see Lee hears that and his eyes start going in two different directions. <laughs> no, 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 no. Jeff <laughs> <laughs> froze face to get his attention. Stop. Stop. I, I feel like I just saw everything at once. <laughs> I mean, you kind of did. I'll explain later. I don't want you to. You don't hurt him. How do you... Is this some weird magic bullshit? Nope. Mathematics. Explain. I will do that later. I don't... Because you can go from... Double infinity to infinite infinity. Where's Jamel? I don't isn't, like math. Is it infinity everything? It's too early in the morning for that kind of <laughs> stuff, Failsy. Just have a pancake in Failsy's mouth. Uh, Failsy, are you math. causing problems? <laughs> I just exp I was just giving them the notion that there was more than one infinity. Fancy, we don't need to be talking about in about the potentialities of multiple realm travel. What? Don't think about it too hard. I knew it was some magic bullshit. Fuck you, Fancy. That's my job. Yeah, I'm not looking to replace you. Also, Aunt Bliss would get mad at you. Yeah. Female shrugs. <laughs> Morgan blushes she, I, at. I, 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 I think she means mad at me, not mad at you. Morgan just blushes at that. <laughs> looks down at the table. Oh no, you're you're good. I think she likes you, Morgan. Alright then. Uh, this might seem a little odd. All things considered, with everything we went through yesterday. But. I actually brought gifts for you all. <gasps> I get a present? Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can already see kept them vibrating. <laughs> yes. I was intending to give them all to you when we when we were all together, but I kind of found out that you weren't with everyone when I arrived. So I've been waiting. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, don't be sorry. I'm glad we have you back. Oh, and since you are back, you get to go first. Yay! <laughs> Alright, I remember when you were at the temple, you were, you were a pretty creative little cutie. <laughs> and so? Oh, and so you all know these are all magic things. Some stuff we either acquired or made at the temple. Okay. Nice, I figured. Yeah. So I know you're creative, and so I got you these. And Jamel starts digging around in her. Uh, she brought with her a little. I mean, it's easy to identify. It's a bag of holding. Mm -hmm. Except its design is much more. How to describe it? Snack like. I was gonna say it's much more like silk, like a silk flowy. Not quite a satchel, but. Om how, what is the word I'm trying to think of here? Purse? Messenger yeah, like a, almost almost like a purse, like a silk purse. Oh, like a silk scarf bag. Yeah, that that would be accurate. Like at a glance, it almost just looks like a silk sash she is wearing on her person, but a pair, but it has a pocket inside of it. That sounds about right. All right. And she pulls out a small box and sets it in front of you. Kent is going to just gently pop open the lid of the box. Alright. When you do so, it opens a bit like how a Fisher's tackle box opens. Oh. And set on these small shelves inside of it are several jars of paint. It's paint! Oh, I might you not really be able to... Need to be 
You move. It's paint and several paint brushes of varying styles and thicknesses. Hmm. You do need to be a little careful with this. I know you're very creative, but whatever you paint with these paints will actually become real. These are called marvelous pigments. Oh, I might Good not thing be she didn't have those when she was younger. <laughs> I would have had a lot more friends. <laughs> I don't know if they would have all been friendly, though. He is right. Uh, <laughs> I might not be able to make music anymore, but I can still make lovely pictures. That sounds both depressing and hilarious. I'm going to call it deprarious. Oh, thank you, Jamal. And she gets up and she hugs her. Like, standing on the chair to hug her. <laughs> <laughs> she just hugs you back. Mm. Arms completely wrap around you. Almost <laughs> twice. She's a big lady. <laughs> and you're arms. very small. Arms. Tail. Full body hug. No, not the tail. That's that's for hugging, Failsy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Is it hugging or restraining? Why not both? Yes. <laughs> It's both. She's gonna, she's gonna sit it's down and make. Both. She's gonna test out the paints by making a little grape. A little grape, you said. Yes, a grape. Right. Like, yeah, a grape. Yeah, uh, it is the paints you have are uh, in the jars of this. It is the three primary colors and then the three secondary colors, as well as black paint. Oh, oh, then never mind. She'll just take a little bit of blue and make a make a blueberry. <laughs> I mean, you have the secondary colors, so you have purple. Yeah, purple. Yeah, oh, purple secondary. Yeah, so, just to take a little bit of purple, make a make a make a grape. Yeah, it is actually a full set of the paints. So yeah, it's got red. It's got red, blue, yellow, purple, green, orange, orange. black, and white. I figured just. So do I have a, an actual grape in hand now after I paint one? You have to like paint it on a surface. So do you just like paint it on the table? So paint it like on her. Like, uh, she go, is this, can I paint this on me? I, you need to be very careful about that. Okay. Because you can, I don't I actually have to read to see if marvelous pigments can affect living creatures. <laughs> I don't think they can. Um... Uh, it doesn't explicitly state. But it's generally implied that it needs to be painted on a non I surface. think it has to be on a flat surface. And that makes sense. Uh, could get to paint on the discarded it, cloth for no, her it, it doesn't say you can't paint it on a paint it on your own skin. It, it says, doesn't explicitly state so, so that's up to you on ruling them. And you know what? It's a, a grape is small enough. Yeah, so you just like paint it in the palm of your hand, and after a second, you what? Actually, this would be funny. Go ahead and make just make for me just a a, a sleight of hand check. I mean, I have painter supplies. Then you can make it's a painter supplies see. check. With charisma? No, with dexterity. Painting is ah. based on your dexterity, not your prettiness. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good grape. <laughs> yeah. You do so. You like paint a grape on your hand, and you're just like, oh, that's cute. And you feel like a weird tingling sensation on your hand before suddenly the the image just goes. And like pops up out of your hand and becomes a, a three dimensional object. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> god, breathe, Kata. No, she's gone. <laughs> and she's just staring at the grape, <laughs> happily staring yes. at her little grape. <laughs> <laughs> she's just in awe. Just, this is my baby now. <laughs> Uh, actually, it also says that if you were if you were to paint food, it doesn't say that it would be fake food. It only says that if you paint something super valuable, that it would be revealed to be a f worthless material. Yeah, makes sense. 
So yeah, you yeah, paint I, a grape and it's actually a grape. You have a nice yeah. ripe purple grape in hand. Yeah, yeah, because you can, you can paint like flowers and trees and stuff, so. I'm going to lick the grape. <laughs> you do so. It feels somewhat dusty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kata, you just did a magic. I did, but that was my Luke Jamel helping me do the magic. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, then, uh, next is. Da Vinci. Something for and me. And she's going to pull out another small box. This one is much flatter than the one she offered Keta. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Yes. He'll take it and flip it open. Yes. I hope this does not come across as insensitive. In insensitive. Because I know this is a bit of a failing of people like you. <laughs> And as you open it up, there appears to be a set of goggles on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, these uh, are goggles are these? of night. Goggles of night? Yes. Uh, most of your companions that travel with you are, well, she like looks around at the multitude of tieflings surrounding you. Uh, the multitude it, of tieflings and the baby. Yes. They're able to see in the dark. And these will let you do the same. Ah. Uh, uh, yes, I, I've noticed this small difference. This will be very useful. Means I don't have to be lighting torches constantly. Yes. It will help you be a little bit more stealthy. And if you ever think that you don't need it, if you let one of your friends wear them, it will let them see further in the dark. Cool. Nah, he'll just nod to Jamel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not a problem. Alright. Uh, Fizzy, you get to go next. Ooh, I got a present. <laughs> of course you got a present. You think I wouldn't bring my wife a <laughs> present if I'm bringing all of her friends presents? <laughs> You get a present. What's that? Me. <laughs> Eat me. Eat me. No, I got the present of getting to come visit all of you and stay with you for a while, so naturally I'm going to bring you all presents. Just trust me, it gets a bit stuffy in the temple. I like to spread my metaphorical and literal wings. He yes. has a wide... He's got a wide wingspan. Yeah. I don't have them right now, though, because they're very inconvenient indoors, though. Luckily, I can hide them. Come on, come on. All right, Filthy, here you go. Another similarly fairly flat box like what was handed to Javinche. What's in the box? Right. Filthy opens the box. Uh, what is inside the box is uh, you pull it out, it appears to be a necklace uh, the pendant for the pendant of which uh, seems to be a shard of a vibrantly green crystal with vines intertwined around it Ooh. it is a petty aft of health it's Will help you prevent from prevent yourself from getting any sort of diseases. I know you like to touch things without thinking about it first. I don't want you getting sick because of it. I can hear the exasperation in that. There's a lot of exasperation. Trust me. No, I, I've traveled with her enough. I no, I get it. <laughs> right. I feel like I'm being picked on. You are being picked on. Don't act like you don't like it, though. She just pats you on the head. 
All right. <laughs> uh, uh, looks between Brimstone and Morgan. Yeah, do her first. Uh, all right then. <laughs> do it. She bonks you on the head this time. <laughs> um, I hope this does not come across as rude, Miss Morgan, but I wasn't really sure what to get you. We so, to I know... <laughs> that is not true. I may not have had to, but there is no purpose to not get you something. So, I got you this. It's a little... <laughs> she, sh like, shivs her hand side to side, like, uncertainly, as she pulls out what appears to be a, a leather water skin and hands it towards you. Though, interestingly enough, the leather of it appears to be blue scales. Huh. And almost like a shimmery metallic blue as well. This is very That pretty. is a... De yes. I'm glad you think so. That is, a, that is actually uh, made from the hide of a a particular sea serpent that we had to deal with at the temple. And especially enchanted with an ability it had. Oh. Uh, that is what we've come to call a decanter of endless water. <laughs> huh. That's certainly it useful. Essentially, yeah, it essentially never runs out of water. And I remember when you all first visited the temple, that was a bit of a problem. <laughs> It was, yeah. This is very useful. Thank you, Jamal. I'm glad you think so. Wait, you get sea serpents at the temple? Sometimes they swim in from the from the water inlays that the massive lake we sit on connect into the ocean with. Did that not cross the lady in the temple? Or was she the one to fight it? Well, she sometimes has to sleep, and they slip by her. Hmm. That must have been an epic battle, though. Well, it was fairly. And also, sometimes she simply does not see them. Hmm. She may have very good eyesight, but she is not always paying attention. Sometimes she's playing with the boat. You're not wrong. <laughs> that was very fun. I, I want to do that again. <laughs> You can always come back. I, and that leaves you, Mr. Brimstone. Yep. Right. Another similar box to what Failsy and Dravinci were handed. Okay. I know that you are very craftsy, and I feel like this will be very helpful for you. Let's open up. All right. You open it, and it actually appears to be a set of eyeglasses with particular frames that have many small extra lenses attached to them. Hmm. Huh. This is actually something that we acquired from a trader. It's, they called them Eyes of Minute Seeing. They apparently let you focus in on very small details useful for when you are working in little fiddly parts, like how I know you like to. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I actually know that a lot of you are crafts, craftsmen of the like, so... A lot of these gifts are intended to be given to you all with the intention of them being useful for all of you. Kaita just closes her box of paints and, like, slides them closer towards her. <laughs> Well, I hope you all can help each other with the, each one of these things, at least. You finally got the old man to wear some glasses. I'm deaf, not blind, and I'm not that deaf. I mean, I'd be surprised at how loud your, your gun is. It is so loud that he lost vision? I know, more, I, I mean more deaf. 
Okay. Uh, Mr. Lee, I'm very sorry, but I didn't think about getting you anything. Oh. Yes, yeah, fine. But you have me now, Lee. I know. And I'm a present. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that way, Jamal technically did get you something. She got to me. <laughs> he just watches his face. Just be, he's like. Goofy little face. <laughs> He's just doing slowly, that his lips spread and just turned into a smile. <laughs> it looks vaguely it? threatening because of his giant teeth, but a little scoot away. <laughs> yeah, kind of like you know when a chimpanzee does it. No, it's it's less like a chimpanzee and more like when you see a bulldog smile. Oh, fair. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's like goofy, but also kind of threatening. But it's cute at the same time. You got a little it's cute in a specific way. That uh, that sounds about Lee. <laughs> cute, I'll cute. my face. You drool. Yeah. All right, not on your pen. Oh, okay. Takes a little napkin, dabs it off. What is everybody's plans for today? I mean, Jamel offered to take me shoe shopping. Um, yes. I also need. Did I have time to re to like re get used to my guitar? Uh, when you tried to reattune to it, you actually could not. For some reason, you can't <laughs> seem to find yourself attaching its magic to your person. Uh. Like you still feel a connection, but you can't draw the magic out of it like you could before. It feels weird. Just wanted to ask about that real quick. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to also try to find a casting focus today because I can't really use the guitar anymore. Mm. Well, I'm sure we can find things like that here. I mean, this is a commerce hub, like you, like you, Morgan and Dervinci have been saying. Yeah. Here, borrow this while until you can get your own. Still sure, hold out the wooden snake stuff. Uh, <laughs> kind of pick up the staff. It. Oh, it's nice. We do have a theme. You do. I mean, <laughs> the. My theme tends to be with a lot more wings. <laughs> I mean, she just looks at the paints that she just gave you. <gasps> I could. I could. Uh, <laughs> Make her own no. magic focus. Well, no, actually, Da Vinci. Yes. You make jewelry, right? Like nice, kind of fancy stuff. I do, although I primarily focus in non-magical jewelry. Well, I mean, if I were to maybe make something for you or do a trade with you, um, do you think you can maybe make a base for, like, a focus? Um... Just so I understand, uh, you want me to make you a arcane focus? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so, like, I know that focuses can, like, range from a variety of things, and some could be crystals. So, it's, you, I get go get the crystal, and, like, you make the base with the crystal in. can give that a try. I've got, uh, still have a fair bit of silver wire. I have can... a tiny wrist, too. <laughs> I'm going to be fixing that. No. Uh, 
Ow. <laughs> I'm going to make you plump. <laughs> give, uh, give her an exercise routine, too. You're welcome to try. Uh, the, what makes you think that you can change what, like, 18 years of other orcs trying to get me, Chunky? Orcs, yes. her dad. My mom. None of them are me. <laughs> I mean, he's... He looks determined. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I, I have a really... Like, I can... I don't keep a lot of fat on. You, have you seen how much sugar I used to eat? I keep, I'm still I gonna... I'm still gonna help you get back to what you were. You're very thin right now, Kreta. Yeah, I, I kind of had to use a lot of my stored up weight. Yeah. I'm at least gonna make it to where I can't see your ribs anymore. <laughs> and then we'll work. <laughs> and then we'll work from there. Uh, um. Jimenja, you can make whatever you think would look pretty. I trust your artistic judgment. I'll still come... Uh, come by with you with a couple of... Uh, different designs. Uh, what would you want, like, in trade? Surprise me. Do you have any favorite flavors? Flavors. Yes. Our... Mm. <laughs> um. <laughs> savory and spicy. Look up at Lee for a moment. Can you help me with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I actually do like a lot of savory and spicy stuff. I don't get to make it very often, though. It's not that savory and spicy doesn't keep very well, unless I can dry it out properly. Yeah. I haven't had a lot of time to do that. Well, we can Maybe I'll be able to buy some... I might be able to buy some smoked chilies here. We can make dinner for everybody. Yes. Make it spicy and savory. Yes. <laughs> That's after shoe shopping, and I need some not winter itchy clothes. <laughs> Alright, you go see shopping. I'm gonna look around the market, guys. I'm gonna spend a bit of coin I got left so I can get myself some more ingredients. Anyone got anything they prefer? Probably like three of the platinum coins that the sack driven she got me, or gave me. No, I got, I got my own money, don't worry. No, I told you. Oh, bye, yeah. Morgan! Um, bye, Morgan. Her. She's not gonna let him not take it. <laughs> Just kind of forcefully put it in his pocket. <laughs> what pockets? Does he not have pockets on his pants? No, no, he wears like leather jerkins. They don't have pockets. <laughs> Wait, so he doesn't have a coin purse on him? He does, but it's not. <laughs> he like wears right his coin purse around his neck. Like a necklace. Oh, then she's gonna just put it in the coin first. Like, did you? No, <laughs> she just climb up him. over it. Come on, money. I can do what I can do. It. I can do it. I can. I can get the stuff myself. You go buy yourself nice shoes. <laughs> he scuttles away. <laughs> I'm scooting away. Alright, I'll be back here probably before sundown. I'm going to shop around, see what they got, see what's around, the local flavors and all that. Okay. Right, Kenta's right. gonna walk, o walk over and give Dravinche a quick side hug. Thank you. It's nothing. Oh no, you're doing a lot of nice things for me, thank you. Yes, yes, now, now go on, you, you two lovebirds have some plotting to do. 
Yeah, you might want to go talk to your lady friend. What? Give Dervinche a pat on the back and just kind of scoot up next to Jamel. You ready to go? Yes. Are you ready to be carried? <sighs> yes. <laughs> Alright then. Do you want to be picked up like a baby or piggybacked? Piggyback. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she just turns around and kneels down so you can hop on. I just got her coin first and just she's ready to go. She's going. <laughs> Alright. Failsy, are you joining them? I was going to join. Alright. Also, just because we're not expecting any combat at all, I'm going to use a. Uh, give a uh, Staff of Radiance a little flourish and see what happens if she calls the wild. Alright, so you're activating a surge? Yes. All right. Well, you know how this goes. I need you to roll a d20 and a d100. One d20. One d100. Low rolls. Seven and uh, nineteen. We don't use that table very often. Seven and nineteen. If it's too catastrophic, she'll cancel it. All right, you suddenly feel, for about a minute, as your body seems to become tougher. For one minute, you gain resistance to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So up the staff to her arm, um, you're a duk duk duk. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My arm feels itchy now. Well, maybe you shouldn't be doing weird magic to yourself in the middle of a tavern. It's fine. It's fine. It's perfectly safe. It's literally not. Oh, well. Alright, let's go. Off we go. So those three are going to head off to shop. What are Brimstone and Travinche doing? Uh, Dravinci will just kind of finish the last bit of his pancake. So what what are you uh, planning to do? Do the people here work with metal in any capacity? Or... That's DM? <laughs> I mean... I guess make a history check for DaVinci to see how much he's even aware of that. Because that would that's kind of outside the realm of what he would have really been interacting with. Yeah, he like, knows that they have metal. Actual, like, finery. Oh, no. I mean... I mean, it's a skill check. You can't naturally one fail a skill check. Dravinche, you would assume so. Like, what metal? Like, you uh, know for a fact that you've done stuff with your fine arts, your gold and silver working. But it's not really something you've had to be directly involved with. Well, the most to my knowledge is they do use steel uh, and gold and silver uh, and various other metals uh, jewelry is a common trade um, as for do they do particular work with it or who works with it I'm I'm afraid that's uh, a bit out of the um, bit out of my zone, so to speak. But if you ask around, uh, I would recommend asking the tavern keep. They can at least speak common. 
Yeah, it's gonna be a problem. I'm trying to trade with somebody and I don't know what the hell they're saying. Would you want a guide? Or a translator? I guess in case. Well, I've got a few places I want to stop. Want to stop by. Just... Before you head off, uh... Give me a minute. That's fine. Da Vinci will get up and... Let's see where Morrigan went off to. Alright. Morrigan, I know you quietly excused yourself, but were you actually wanting to try to, like... I mean, obviously it was addressed by the party, though without consent. Keep that in mind, people. If someone says they're quietly leaving, you can't just say, Oh, bye! I'm fine with it. It's just she... It was more just a case of she was quietly just leaving because she didn't want to interrupt the conversation is all. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So would she still be in the area? Did she just go back to the cart or? She just went to sit outside. Oh, fair enough. And it's a good day to sit outside as well. It's still early in the morning, so the sun is still just starting to really rise. Though you guys did admittedly sleep in a little bit due to just having such a rough day yesterday, you just needed to sleep. So it's probably around 11 to almost noon at this point. Yeah. Still fairly morning sunlight, though. A little bit overcast, so it's not super bright outside, but it still feels... It's pleasantly warm, despite it being a fairly autumn day. Yes, uh, Rinchi would just basically step out and see Morrigan sitting out there. Oh, there you are. Hi. Uh, um, is everything all right? Yeah, I just... She shrugs. I just didn't feel like I really had anything to contribute to the conversation. I was done eating, so came outside to get some fresh air. Fair enough. Uh, Brimstone and I are going to be... Uh, going around uh, a few of the shopping areas. Uh, I've got a few places I want to go to. He's... Going to try to track down any smiths in the area, I guess. Now, would you want to take along or just uh, want to spend the day for yourself? I don't want to be by myself. I'll come with. Alright. You, you sure you're okay? No, but it'd be better if I didn't wallow. Then come on. Let, let's at least air, air it out while we're moving. Maybe today I won't get stabbed. Oh, if that happens today, I'm gonna have words with whoever does it. But... One of the places I want to go to is the Busy Bee Shipping. And actually, that reminds me. Did you have any other plans about coming here or that you want to do today? And. He's not sure how to address the problem. Or address, address the topic. Well, if I happen to see him while we're walking around, I'm not gonna... I don't know. Hmm. 
Anyway, it, it'll happen when it hap happens. Or maybe it'll happen another day. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I'll go and fetch Brimstone and we can be off. And he'll go and collect brimstone for the three of them to uh, to trap to travel around the city. Yeah. Alrighty then. Okay, so we currently have the party split: Felzy, Jamel, and Keta, and Brimstone, Morgan, and Dravinche. That's like a fairly even party split in case of combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have two magic and one one marshal. We have two magic and one marshal. Well, we have one and a half magic and one and a half marshal. Because <laughs> adventure is weird. <laughs> yeah, both both groups have decent coverage, but yeah. you know, unless you guys do something real dumb, so I'm looking at Felsy's group. You <laughs> what do you mean? Probably won't end up in combat. <laughs> Yeah, it's honestly fair. Jamel is 90% of fails. He's impulse control. And all Keta wants to do is get some shoes. <laughs> True. but I want shoes, but what about murder? I mean, the beast inside does want murder. Father, I crave violence. Well, the beast is I can shut uh, up for like two seconds so I can get shoes. Or, or, <laughs> or rather, right. in Kelsey's case, wife, I crave violence. <laughs> Alright, I would like for both groups to elect one person to roll a d20 to see which one we start with. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Okay. Brimstone has Can elected himself. Demel? Can we vote Demel to do it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> technically, sure? I guess. Uh, I'll do it. I okay. <laughs> Just a d20. To determine who we focus on first. I don't tell guys. There it is. There's Failsy. Failsy doing Failsy things, which is rolling natural 20s at the weirdest op opportune times. <laughs> rolling natural 20s when it kind of doesn't really matter. I can't yeah. at this point, it's like, if, if we were doing this at a table, this is just Failsy just slamming the dice on the table and it's just 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she doesn't even roll, she just rolls. <laughs> And just I rolled. She does that thing where she rolls it, but puts her hand over it before anyone could see what it is. Moves it over to twenty. Yeah, mm -hmm. I rolled twenty. No, yeah. perfect. Anyways, perfect. so we're going to first focus on Felzy, Keta, and Jamel, as you all are currently making your way through the market. <laughs> As a gnat tries to enter my nostril. Gross. Kill it. Very warm. Hmm? You're very warm. <laughs> that is weird because I am cold blooded. Yeah, you feel warm. I like it. I just ate a pancake. Its warmth spreads through me. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been able to go on the piggyback for a long time. I think the last time- No, I think one of the last times was when Lee tried to pick me up. I mean, he certainly seems big enough to piggyback you. Mm. So, so he has the personality sleep. that makes me think he might want to be piggybacked right afterwards. And I can't do that. <laughs> well, you can be able to, but you don't have those gloves anymore. Oh. I can't tell that they were taken from me. That was like Felzy's first successfully magic item. <laughs> well, Felzy, you can always make another one. Oh, I mean, if we go find that, uh, or if we go find that, uh, the warehouse where I was kept, they might have them there. Felsy stops and you just sort of hear the creaking as she turns towards, like... Ah, uh, not, not now. 
Fail, now, fa- I need as, you, as you do that, Failsy, you just get wrapped up in a tail and picked up. Nope. No mischief today. We are getting shoes and maybe buying some candy. And I want some fish. Fish? Yes. You know, Jima, if you are to ever come to the Emerald Plateau, there is this very lovely place that I took Valesy to, and I like going there. Um, it's called the Rock Hard Cafe. Very nice. Very good wings. I did actually fly over the Emerald Plateau on my way to get to the Bastion. I don't live in the upper part, I live in the lower part with a lot of the lumber workers. Okay. It's very different when you kind of I... get to the split. Uh, when you look at it from above, it's not too surprising that it's different. One side has buildings barely spaced apart at all, and the other side, you can actually walk for a few feet before running into some kind of construction. I grew up with a lot of orcs, and a lot of the orcs who are working now were my friends when I was younger. Hmm. I can imagine that was an interesting way to grow up, considering how small and fragile you seem to be. Yeah. I mean, once they got kind of used to my size, they just kind of considered me another orc. I, I just didn't have the teeth on the bottom, I had the teeth on the top. <laughs> hmm. Nope. So, and of course, you're a little kid. I mean, who's going to, I mean, try to tell you that you can't go play? I mean, my dad could, but you know. <laughs> I honestly couldn't say. I didn't really get to play much growing up. <gasps> you did. Well, no, I'm a... <laughs> I hate to say this, but I am royalty. There's a lot oh, of responsibilities yeah, we... that come with that. We need to fix that then. Uh, <laughs> she just looks back towards her tail. Felsy's brought a lot of adventure and, in, and intrigue into my life since she's just come into it. I mean, th- th- it's just also like the simple things like Red Rover, uh, hide and seek, Bl- not dangerous hide and seek, she looks back at Felsy, or things might try to, you know, eat you. I can honestly say that I don't know what that is, but I'm sure you'll explain it to me. Yes. Um, uh, and, but before that, we still need to look for shoes. Do either of you know where the market is? Oh, wait, do- doesn't Keta? <laughs> yeah, you would. You've been, like, skulking yeah, she, around here for a while. Yeah, she kind of points to her. It's, oh, it's over this way. All right. You know, this so... Is a little careful. We don't know if any of them are still lingering around. There won't be a problem with me around, Keta. It's just... She it just kind of buries her face a little bit. At the first sign of trouble, I'll bring up my wings and we'll be gone. All of us. Wait, wouldn't that be dangerous for Felsy? What if she falls out of the tail? She... I Keta, have... look at this. He just brings the tail with Felsy in it. Also, I have I have my own wings. That is true. You do have wings. Okay, I'm going to put you down now, Felsy. Do not cause a do not cause a genocide, a war crime, or a felony. Or a misdemeanor. No, no promises are made. Then I'm not putting you down. I promise not to genocide. Or felony, or war crime. A misdemeanor I can deal with. Uh, She, like, looks up at Keta. What's a misdemeanor? It's like a little crime. Like, uh, kind of, uh, like, vandalism. Okay, I can... (laughs) Why is that labeled dragon deception? Because that... Because when Felsy lies to dragons. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. It's double proficiency. Yep. Where's my D20? 
fucking kept it inside Failsy? Nope. <laughs> I mean... I you can You can try, but it would still be a... It would still be a 28. You'd have to contest against. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. You just... That's... She feels he's telling the truth. She's not going to commit a crime. All right, Squid. then. Felsy, if you do commit a crime, I am going to squish you. It's I can deal with it that. Might not be the, it might not be the fun type of squish. Oh, no. She knows what type of squish I mean. It It is the squish that stops her. Puts you down. Okay, I didn't even tell you where she was kept. Felzy does not commit a felony. <laughs> all right. Yeah, you all walk for a few minutes, and eventually, Keta, you do actually lead them back to essentially that same market square where the party found you in the first place. <laughs> I.e. where the map is currently. <laughs> How much, uh... Have they rebuilt the sidewalk where we failed to do off some stuff? Uh, it's... There's, like, some... You don't have to move your tokens around on the map. I just want to. Okay. Fair enough. Well, just because this also is not properly to scale and representation mm -hmm. of what the market looks like. Uh, you look over. It's currently essentially fenced in. Like, you know how you have those, like, fence posts that you move and put in front of a road to show that it's blocked off? Mm -hmm. There's basically those across that uh, small street. And you can still see the brickwork of the ground there is mostly still melted away. It looks like they've started to remove the destroyed bricks. But not much work has been done on putting in new cobblestone and bricks there yet. Notably, though, even though it's still featured on the map, no bodies. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna uh, yoink is Deloinus. I wonder what type of shoes I should get. Uh, I mean, I'm partial to foot wraps, but I have these things. She just wiggles her, her big <laughs> claw toesies. Hit the sticks a foot forward, and she has a kind of small foot. <laughs> You, I, you've got like squishy little human feet, so. I mean, I'd hope so. I think, I think Grandma, Grandma had the the, the clawed feet. Hmm? Um, my Grandma has clawed feet. Um, and Dad doesn't. Hmm. Not 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 the the one that you met. He my other one in Tezreal. <laughs> oh. I still don't my, know. Are my teeth and grandparents? I don't think I met any of your grandparents. I mean, you might grind them. Has I didn't. Grand I was present, but I didn't really meet him. You saw him. Well, I didn't look at his feet. I, mean, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think he has clawed feet. I don't know. I didn't I look at them. When do I have to ask him next time they see him? No one ever looks at his feet. They're actually cloven boots. <laughs> that would be weird. Well, you see, so... He's actually a satyr. No one's actually noticed. No one's ever <laughs> noticed because no one look because his his portrait is only from the waist up. You don't know what's below it. So, you see, my last boots were actually uh, boots that I got um, from one of my worker friends. They're very tough. Um, and they had little symbols of venti on them uh, to kind of symbolize the freedom of being able to walk wherever you want. Makes sense. Venti is the goddess of travelers. Yes. Suddenly strikes Felzy. He's like, wait, isn't there like a pair of 
glass boots in your bag? Oh, those are class boots. I want comfy boots. They're not comfy? They are, but like they're really good for like the desert, and I don't want to ruin them. I mean, they're good for anywhere. Though I understand, they are a bit of a statement. Also, I did, I don't like wearing socks. Like, sometimes I don't want to wear socks, and I don't want people staring at my feet. Fair enough. There are some people who, who like that. It's gross. Okay. <laughs> so, and she kind of just kind of like starts looking out for boots or like shoes. All right. Cobbler. Oh, uh, you. Yeah, you have seen a cobbler a few times and debated steal, debated about stealing from it last time you were here because you really wanted shoes. <laughs> My feet were cold. But yeah, unfortunately, this is a pretty f busy place, and sneaking into a cobbler to steal a pair of shoes is kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got essentially Jamel takes you to the takes you to one of the cobblers you do know around here, no of around here. Mm -hmm. And the next, essentially, couple of hours are spent having a pair of shoes specifically measured in size to fit your feet. Uh, how much is that going to cost, Kata? <laughs> uh, that is going to cost... I'm assuming you want, like, a sturdy pair of traveling boots? Yeah. Alright. Uh, that would be... a gold... <laughs> Which is a lot of money, keep in mind. Yeah, and then she realizes she only has platinum, and it's like... I... I'm sorry, cut to you. And she kind of slides the platinum across. I'm sorry, do you have change? Because <laughs> she only has platinum! No, <laughs> oh, certainly. I mean, you gotta remember, you're also in a trade hub city. There's it's, A lot of coin goes through here. It's more so, so it's not really that weird to see platinum. She feels awkward using it. <laughs> Fair. Uh, while Kata was getting new boots fit, fitted, is there anything in the range of, like, magical boots that I have? No, this is, like, someone who actually, like, makes new shoes for travelers who come through this area. So no pre-made boots? Uh, there are pre-made boots, but nothing magical. Okay. This isn't, like, like a peasants. specialty trader of that sort of thing. This is actually just a cobbler. Um. I don't like the statement $200 bill. That makes my brain have a weirdly visceral reaction. <laughs> uh, I mean, other than that, Keto would just want to pick up some, like, canvas. <laughs> Alright. Oh, not hard to do. You can get like a... Oh, do you want like a sheet of canvas or do you want like a painter's canvas? I If she's able to, could she get like a painter's like book where she could like just paint in a book? Uh, well that would be like... A sketchbook? Uh, it would be kind of a... That would be a good bit more expensive, but yeah. I mean, it might be a bit more, like, at least space saving instead of keeping a bunch of, like, canvases in the, um, <laughs> in the cart. She's on Dravinci's dime at the moment. <laughs> Fair enough. Dravinci's dime. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could. How much would it cost? You can me? find yourself a nice, I always forget, is the material that's, like, the really sturdy paper, that's called vellum, isn't it? So. so it's like it's like a not technically paper it's like a almost leathery like material yeah it's what most spell books are made of yeah basically buy a blank spell book yeah you can do that and that would probably probably cost you about 50 gold mm. but it's got about uh 100 pages it's got 100 pages for a blank spell book? Yeah, you have 100 pages because I think the level of spell takes up that many pages. Uh, yeah, I mean... Just, never mind, she's gonna just... <laughs> that's what the old mechanics used to be. 
I don't think that's how it works. I think spell books work via principle of each page is worth like 50 to 100 gold. Uh, spell books are just a flat price. It's to copy a spell is 50, 50 GP of inks per level. That's what I thought it was. Yeah. For, I'm gonna have to pull up my thing because I don't or currently have the pricing. Like I don't have the pricing gold for a blank spell book in front of me. Kent is just gonna say never mind in the spell book and probably just get some like a little like paper book that she can make like a bunch of like loose leaf paper she can make a book out of herself. It's not like a fancy book, it's more like you kinda just fold up paper and look. <laughs> Just as a note, a uh, spell book by default uh, in the player's handbook costs 50 gold. It does cost 50 gold? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I actually just remembered that off the top of my head. That is surprising. Uh, sh sheets of paper that are just like normal paper, not anything fancy, or two silver pieces apiece. Alright, so, so get like four golds worth of that. Alright. So four golds worth of that. Five. So you get 20 pieces of paper. And then just it's a little bit of candy. Not a lot. And maybe some clothes suited for the Blossom Kingdom. <laughs> but you just got your crop top made. <laughs> uh, Alright. I mean, not very hard. Candy, it's its typical price. You can spend a couple of gold and get yourself nice and stocked back up on candies from around here, which mostly involve, like, honey candies. Uh, there are these little things which you find, which are called uh, pollen poppers. Okay. Which, it looks like it's just a little fuzzy brown ball, and you put it in your mouth, and it's kind of like a sensation of both Pop Rocks and Cotton Candy at the same time. Like, it melts really fast in your mouth and gives and constantly, like, makes this weird little poppy fizzy sensation. It's weird, but tasty. Yeah, she's saving up some money to see, uh, Bliss again. Yeah. Uh, look... Is there any particular style for the Blossom Kingdom that Kenta notices with clothing? Uh, I mean, currently you're in a trading hub, so you're actually seeing quite a few different styles of clothing of people from around. A lot of the locals seem to be wearing... Uh, I mean, a lot of the locals seem to be wearing fairly nice silk clothing. Mm, that can get cold and dirty easily. <laughs> yeah. It seems like probably there's... A lot of silken clothing. Not really much else you would really notice because it seems like a lot of the natural products around here are insect products. Mm. <laughs> you, you want to wear bugs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the actual like guard armor you see around, as you pay close attention to it, it is actually made of hardened amber and like chitin. Or chitin. Oh. I imagine However that would you also pronounce is... that word. Chitin. It is a strange question. The guards we fought yesterday, were they wearing metal armor or the same kind they of were, armor? Yes, they were wearing metal armor. Alright. Like, they were distinctly wearing, like, steel plate armor. Not plate armor, but, like, steel uh, buckled armor. Splinted. I always forget the word splinted. Splint mouth. I yeah. hate... I hate it so much, it's I always forget it exists. Uh though like I imagine it might be <laughs> I imagine it might be cheaper to get the kind of silk clothing here in a trade hub where there's a lot of people going in and out, probably a lot of things being made. <laughs> oh, I mean you can you can buy yourself a set of travelers co travelers clothes for two gold pieces. Yeah, she she'd ask for them with some like nice cherry blossoms. Or at least like a little bit like a sash. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, that's something you could get without issue. It's nice, it's pretty, but it's fairly simple. It's more built to be sturdy than it, than anything. Yeah. And you would actually you would actually note that the silks you buy here are a good bit warmer than you'd expect them to be. Look it's me. heavier silk. Oh, I like this. <laughs> yeah. 
it's still nice and flowy, but it but it does provide a good bit of buffer against the wind. She does a little bit of a twirl in her new outfit. How do I look? I think you look adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was going to buy some silk robes as well. Alright. Specifically, you want to buy robes? Uh, robes or a kimono, if, that, if that's what they're selling. Uh, you could, you, could get a kim- you could get a kimono. It'd be more expensive, though. It's essentially the fine clothes of this area. So it'd be 15 gold pieces. Yeah, if I was, we'll pay that. All right. Did you get one with a snake pattern? I don't know if they do snakes here. Uh, let me roll to see if they do, or if you get lucky enough to find one. Uh, you don't find one with snakes on it, but you do find one that seems to have. Uh, what am I trying to think of here? Wow, my brain completely shut down for a second. One that has, like, a sort of lizard-esque motif, almost like a basilisk. Ah. Nice. I think Kretha would pay pay to get some, like, nice clothes for herself so she has something, you know, fancy. Yeah. Uh, hers definitely kind of flower. Uh, if she can get, like, hydrangeas? Is that, like, doable? Actually, yes, that would be much, that would be fairly doable. That is a fairly common visual pattern in this region. And she'd have them in all different kind of colors, just to kind of match whatever the whatever hydrangeas can actually come in. Basically, every color. Yeah, so I think <laughs> hydrangeas are a very adaptable plant. I think specifically, she'd lean towards uh, like very green and uh, pink. All right. The patterning on it ends up looking a bit more like a bit more like a blooming cherry blossom tree, but you know it's hydrangeas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Alright then. I was would buy a second one for Jamel. I don't know if they'd have to charge extra for her size. Uh, no, because there are a lot of really big races in this area too. Keep in mind, this is the place where spirit folk live as well, and they range in sizes a lot. Uh, this, this might be funny. Yeah. What Jamel ends up getting is actually one that seems to depict uh, blue and gold flames on it. And the back almost has what looks like a um, a gnarled tooth face, uh, silk printed on the back of it, <laughs> like oh. an oni mask. It is. Demo got a demon now. <laughs> she is comparable in size to an oni in its actual like humanoid form. I look, you look very badass. Uh, thank you. I'm surprised this fits, though I do suppose it is just a robe you you cinch inwards with a cloth. <laughs> I like Makes it. You look nice. <laughs> I think that I might look a little bit like a courtesan, but I rock it. I don't have the boobs for that. <laughs> I. Do. <laughs> flies in close like my courtesan. <laughs> You're technically mine, but fair enough. <laughs> so she's your hoe. <laughs> technically, I think the actual term would be concubine, but still. Or is that the right word? Um, my, my dad says bad partner. Hmm. It is weird. I still don't know all the common words for terms like that. Ah, uh, there, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I should introduce you to my aunt. She knows a lot of them. You'll have to do that she's sometime. Not, she's also about as big as you. Hmm. 
Impressive. Right. Internally felt Jamel's like, somebody's challenging me. <laughs> <laughs> Jamel isn't challenged. She's just excited. <laughs> Alright. At this point we cut away as you guys are trying on the different outfits and making sure everything fits properly. Just have a good good time of it. Cutting over to the other side of the party. Uh, do we want to take a break real quick before we do the other side of the party? Or are you guys uh, I'm good to keep going. Go? Myth? I'm good. Danny? Uh, I'm actually good to go ahead. I... Th- <laughs> Sorry, I had to run yeah. and use the washroom while you were focusing on everybody else. That was, it was the it was an opportune time to do it. Ye. Yeah. Ye. Yeah. So let's keep going. All right. Uh, Andy and Failsy, you can take your break now while we focus on the other half of the party. I don't get a break, but I also don't need one. All right, so. Cutting back to when you all set off from the inn. You were wanting to look for a smith, specifically being the first main target since you were trying to guide Brimstone around. Am I correct? Yes. Alright. Due to your previous role, you probably haven't had to visit any of them. No, so Da Vinci would be more focusing on uh, conversing with the locals. Yeah, you're you're fairly so you're a fairly sociable person. So, if you would, I'd like if you could just make a general purpose charisma check. See how many people are willing to talk to you. Charisma or persuasion? Charisma. Okay. You're just trying to attract attention. <laughs> <laughs> now you, haven't 20. To people. you haven't gotten to the to the talking to people yet, but you kind of right, look sure. the part of someone who lives here anyways. Alright, Javinche. He he puts he put him ankle out. <laughs> yes, because I'm sure this place is, is is quite puritanical. You don't know. I don't. A human uh, ankle in a place mostly consisted of elves and insects? Scandal. Spicy. Scandal. Just five <laughs> carts immediately stop right next to him. The, the, I, they don't stop, they just crash. I <laughs> I don't think he's dressed in his usual clothes, but if he was, just like, oh, the ankle, that's what draws us. Not the abs that are clearly exposed. Mm. Uh, I think for here he'd be uh, wearing his blue outfit, so the abs are covered. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Slight, slightly more modest. Slightly. slightly. All right. Uh, a- asking around, it doesn't take very long for you to find someone who is. I mean, I state this before. Though the common language of this area is actually Elvish, a lot of people do speak common, and most people, whenever they see that you are a human, they do immediately assume common. That is what I must speak when I am talking to this man. So, you just ask around a bit. A lot of people, a lot of the people you end up talking to, are actually impressed by the fact that you know Elvish. And it doesn't take you that long to be pointed in the direction of a smith. In fact, you end up getting directions to a couple of them. Uh, specifically, you get directions to a, uh, an actual blacksmith, and then a crystal smith. Okay. It'd be hmm. up to you which it'd be up to you all which one you'd want or which one or both would you all would want to visit. I mean I exactly got experienced in uh molding crystal in the same way I do that in molding metal. It's an interesting option, but I'd rather show don't, don't you still have that uh crystal that we found back on Kingfisher Isle? Uh, which one? The uh, the seed crystal. Mm. Uh, out of character, I'm trying to remember. Was it a frost crystal? Yeah. 
Uh, no, the frost crystal, that the crystal seed specifically. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that could end up uh, being a good discussion point if we visit a crystal smith. I mean, yeah. Still, I kind of want to try to. No. Maybe after the fact. We do. And we do have the day, so but it sounds like you prefer to visit to the uh, the black the metal worker first. Yeah. Be a lot easier for me to manipulate metal, I assume steel. Then it will be for me to manipulate crystal. At least I assume. They do a number of fantastical things with crystals. But fair. We can visit them first. We still have the directions to the crystal smith. Yeah. Mm hmm. Morgan, your thoughts? She's just tagging along to not be left by herself, honestly. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that if that if you did have something you'd want to comment, it gets heard. Yeah. Like, if, if anything, she might just be, like, while paying attention to the conversation those two are having, just kind of, like, keeping her eyes open, scanning about for in case she does see her father around. Alright. Uh, for while you all are walking around then, could you give me a general per uh, general perception check? Sure thing. Let's see. That's persuasion. I need perce- There it is. 18. 18? Alright then. Roll probability check real quick. There it is. Ow. All right. Alright. You're keeping your eyes peeled for the moment. Uh, as your group starts making your way towards the blacksmith you were told about, it's sort of tucked off to the corner of one of the markets, not the main not the main uh plaza market that you were in previous the day previous but another side area that seems to be a more niche trade area more like a center for specific craftsmen uh, from what you were told both of the smiths that you were told about were actually in this uh, this smaller plaza mm -hmm. but it does not take terribly long as you are entering this plaza for Brimstone. You specifically to catch the scent of hot metal being worked and the rhythmic thumping of what sounds like steel on steel. But far faster and with more force than you would think a person could do. Hmm. I now gotta see this. I, I'm not. Uh, I know it's, this is most likely not it, but when you say that, I'm just picturing a goblin on like a jackhammer on top <laughs> of the <laughs> <of the> metal. <laughs> just, just, uh, no, 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 no. Maybe. Clearly, clearly, it's just Bernal's, but he's just shooting hammers. <laughs> 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 I loaded hand hammers into my crossbow. Uh, what a weird, what a weird crossbow. Oh, I needed that. <laughs> All right then. Uh, you make your way over there. It doesn't. I mean, it's not hard to see. You f basically just follow the scent and the sound, and you find it pretty quickly. Especially because it's pretty easy to notice though the building that has the large smokestack of a kiln in it. 
Uh, it has the sort of setup that you typically come to associate with a blacksmith where it has like the large open fronted uh, workstation where people can actually see the blacksmith at work. Mm -hmm. Though you do see something very weird. Uh, the smith who is currently working is moving a piece of red hot metal underneath a strange device with a bunch of leather straps that is rhythmically and quickly hammering the metal for him instead of using a hand hammer. Huh. <laughs> but yeah, just the, the consistent sound of the somewhat dull thudding of hot metal being moved into new positions. He didn't seem to be taking notice of your group at the moment, but seems just to be idly at work. Looks like he's probably at this moment making you look for a second. Looks like he's making a blade of some sort. Is some something the matter? I've never seen nothing like that before. Some kind of automated hammer kind of deal. Oh, they come out. They have all sorts of innovations uh, that they keep making. Is it only just the blacksmith, or are there apprentices there? Uh, you only see the one at the moment. Though it looks like the kiln itself is still firing up for the day. Because remember, at this point, you guys left at just before noon. Mm -hmm. So everything is still, like, getting into motion for most of the craftsmen for the day. They do mm -hmm. eat their big breakfasts, and a kiln does take a long time to fully reach its heat. Yeah, it does. Well, let's wait until he's done working. No, uh, working with that, and... We can open up discussions. Yeah. Morgan, you doing okay over there? Huh? huh? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was just people watching. No worries, just one. Make sure you didn't get lost in the crowd. <laughs> All right, then. It's a, it's a few minutes before the smith finally turns away from what he was working on to set the piece of metal back into the kiln to reheat. And he finally looks over to notice your group. Do you have a question? Uh, does he say that in common or Elvich? Uh, he's saying that in common. Because the first person he's seeing is you, since I imagine you're still at the forefront of the party. Yeah. Yeah, Brimstone's probably off to the side just watching the hammer. It's an interesting uh, piece of machinery, Brimstone. Mm hmm. You're like taking it apart in your brain, trying to figure out how it works. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, Dravinci will open uh, in Elvich. Uh, uh, good day. Uh, uh, hope uh, I'm not too much of an interruption. A friend of mine is a gunsmith and and likes to work with metal, and he wanted to ask a few questions of a local me local craftsman. Not sure what a gun is, but if you if you need of a smith, I can help you out. He just has a few he questions. Over at Brimstone. No, he he unfortunately only speaks common though. He never switched into Elvish. Oh. You're not actually sure what race this man is because he's currently still wearing like a a steel mask on his head. Uh, and then Tarinchi's gonna look to Brimstone. The floor is yours. Did you build that? 
pointing at the hammer. Hmm. With a bit of help from my assistant, but yes. Moves metal huh. much faster. Ah, no kidding. Well, it's effort into the process, too, considering you don't got to do it yourself. Mm. It's for bulk moving. It doesn't do the fine work you still need to do with a hand hammer. That's fair. Still. Yeah. We're still refining it. We're still refining it. Sometimes it strikes too hard. And that's bad for metal. Yeah. Is it all mechanical work or the hammer? Yeah. Yeah, it's all mechanical. Uh, aside from a little bit of magic to actually keep the internal mechanisms moving, it's more of my assistant's work there. Uh, damn. A small... She calls it a lightning moat. It's a small gemstone that produces electrical energy. The rest of it, all mechanical. Got it. I could probably power it off of a water wheel as well, but I would need to have a station next to a river for that. Yeah. Hmm. I guess that makes it more convenient. Indeed. I'm change the location. Uh... <laughs> You had questions then? Yeah, I uh. Notice y'all don't take much kindly to iron around here. No. The elves and other fae and such aren't partial to it, it's poison yeah. to them. Uh, you can fair. Ref You can refine the impurities out of it though, doesn't seem to bother them as much. Right, making steel. Mm -hmm. I guess it makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh. He sort of looks at you as if curious about what you actually want to ask him for. I guess Definitely I'm looking. Oh, God. If you all like to step in, you can. Yeah, okay. You strike me as an individual who might like to see a shop like this. I mean, if you got more stuff like that hammer. Quite a few things, actually. Well, we've come to call it drill press, rolling machine. Things that used to only be innovations done in the massive scale by Tezvarel. We're actually trying to work it into a smaller scale for personal crafting. Mm, makes sense. Got a lot of those big machines out there. Yeah. yeah, as you all step into this blacksmithing shop, it's weird because of the perspective of you all essentially living in a world where you're technically in the very early stages of the industrial revolution but only in a specific part of the world this entire side of the world is mostly still like rural civilization mm -hmm. with some innovation like that it's bizarre to see these types of large machinery although comparatively these are fairly small from what their normal forms would be at use it almost would look like what we would acknowledge as a modern blacksmith's workshop that's something I am very familiar with yeah. hmm. doesn't come up much with Morgan but like while well, she steps in there and she's just looking around at everything absolutely fascinated not saying anything but she is clearly interested in watching how the things move and work 
Yeah, it's just like everything around you is constantly moving, but nothing is making it move as far as you can see. And we even have a lathe. A lathe? Oh. That is rather oh. advanced in this area. Yeah. It was difficult to build, but... Frankly, we're still working on it. We're able to get a an actual crystal cutting edge that's able to s peel steel apart with relative ease. Huh. Oh, that'd be useful. So what can I do you for? I mean, I'm mostly here for metal. Mm. One of the main weapons steel. I use is a uh, made iron. Your friend said you were a gunsmith. I don't know what a gun is. Just kind of... Pop the revolver out. Do you hand it to him? Uh, unload it first. <laughs> I don't assume you carry it around loaded, because you seem like a responsible enough individual. And also, you load it super fast when you know there's danger coming. Fair. Fair. So then, yeah. Interesting. It's a bit crude, but it almost looks like you would have had to do the handwork that we can do with our machines here. Yeah. Hmm. Looks like a pipe. This is like a valve cylinder almost. You see as he's, like, spinning the chamber of it. Didn't really have a whole lot of, uh, options. How to make do with what I could. Process is still imperfect, considering... If the... Powder charge goes off wrong, it can... Really mess up the inner workings. Powder charge? Just kind of pull one of the pull, pull a bullet out. Hmm. Put one of these in there. Pull the trigger. Interesting. Firing pin activates the powder charge, sends the projectile out. I can honestly say that I've never seen a weapon like this before. Yeah. No, just looking at it right now, I can almost. You see he's actually like turning it around in his hands. I can definitely see how it fits together and works though. Eh, uh, it ain't pretty, but it works. Hmm. And that's not even his most impressive example. Hmm. You said the other one was made of iron, so they confiscated it here? In a word, we got a chest in our cart. That's where mm. it's kept right now. Might as well be confiscated. You can't get into those lock boxes. Yeah. Kept away for safekeeping. Of course, mm. they didn't take all the iron off me. Hmm. Fair enough. I could certainly help you with this if you... If you'd want to stick around for a bit, talk to my assistant, and we can help you draw up some plans. Would be Get helpful. Something machined out. Being able to be, uh, being able to use the machines and help cut down on the time. Certainly. I'd be very curious to see what you'd actually draw up with plans for this, because I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, I got a few ideas. Hmm. Well, uh. We can work it out. Uh, you want to try more? Then you guys have got to wait, wait for me. I ain't, I ain't here by the time you get back. I'm probably back at the back of the end. Certainly. Uh, I could tell from from your first look that uh, you probably stick around here. Yep. This is the type of... Th if you'd want to work with steel, by the way. I'm assuming you said this can fail, mess up the internal mechanisms? 
Yeah, not so much that it can't be fixed quickly, but, you know, heat of battle and all that, sometimes you mess something up and it takes a lot longer to fix. Hmm. I haven't Fair had enough. it blow up on me yet, but it's always a possibility. Hmm. Might be able to sell you something that would make roadside repairs and working on these a bit easier on you then. We'll see. Hmm. <laughs> I'll have my assistant give you the whole feel for it. She calls it a pocket kiln. Hmm. You, you can't see his eyes, but you can feel them roll slightly. Just in his tone. Hmm. That could that could be useful for my trade as well. Yeah. If you'd like to see it, I can show you all it before she arrives. Can't necessarily tell you I tell you I could show you how it works. That'd be more her purview. That's fair. I'd I'd be interested. I work with gold and silver myself. Uh, uh, Morgan, is that okay? Yeah, I, I just like seeing how things work. <laughs> yeah. This would be of interest to all of you, then. Uh, he walks you over to a... Looks like a much lesser used portion of the workshop. Or... Hard to say if it's lesser used. It's very... It's less crowded, but there is more clutter. There's fewer machines around here. And currently set up in this area, you see... Uh, a device that is set up on a tripod that looks to be about a six foot long uh, hollow on the outside hollow steel box. Probably huh. about two foot wide by about a foot tall. And it has just a, a steel latch door on the front of it. Hmm. She's made this thing, calls it a porter kiln, or a pocket kiln. I don't see how it would fit in a pocket. But I can definitely understand why, why you could call it a portable kiln. Yeah. I think it's still going to be heavy, but... Mm. Weighs about 200 pounds. Yeah. Not light by any oh. means, but... Much lighter than a kiln. Yeah, no kidding. How do you fuel it? You don't, actually. With wood? Magic. Yep. She likes working with these moats. And he actually <laughs> unlatches the front door of it. And as he does so and opens it, just a wave of intense heat just washes out of it. Just over all of you. Almost enough to, like, scold your skin on contact, but not quite. Well, it's, it's a bit, it's it's a bit spicier for, for Trevinche than it is for Morrigan and Brimstone. <laughs> yeah, I picture Brimstone just... Huh. Well, that kicks out a lot of heat. Indeed. As much as a, as much as a kiln can. There's these dials on the side to adjust the temperature inside as well. Perfect. I don't know if you can see them in re in there right now. It's to its lowest setting, but he sort of gestures to the inside of it. By the way, he's standing far closer to this than any of you all are and doesn't really seem to be bothered by it. I mean, fair enough. Yeah. He points in with a thick leather clad uh, hand. At the top there, you can see that there are three small fire moats mm. positioned around the inside. You can individually control each one's temperature. Mm. It's very good for blade working or for fine detail working if you just want to work with smaller objects. Can't quite fit a great sword in here, but long sword, things of that nature, it's fairly good for. Yeah, we aren't exactly looking to making any big big weapons, but something like that'll help. Yeah. Trying to make on the road. 
Couldn't tell you how much she wants to charge for one. She hasn't tried selling one yet, but she's mm -hmm. told me she'd be eager to try selling one if, if anyone were interested. Might take her a bit of time to have it made, though. Guess that'll have to be negotiated when she gets here. Yeah. She usually arrives about midday. Hmm. Works the night shift as well. Ah, uh, fair enough. Mm. Yep. Oh. Night on that one. Oh, well, I can... In I imagine we can leave the, that negotiation to you, Brimstone. Yeah. I don't even know if she has an idea of how much she'd want to charge for one. The moats aren't terribly expensive, but these bricks that we have to line the inside of this kiln with to make sure it doesn't melt itself are a bit pricey. So these moat things are little gemstones infused with... Pure elemental magic, yep. Elemental magic. Huh. Where do you get those? Well, she makes them. Mm, gotcha. All gemstones, most gemstones that you can find up in the northern mountains that we mine typically have some type of elemental affinity to them, and someone with enough magical knowledge can bring that out of them. Huh. Takes fine working and a bit of magical know-how, but... You can for you can cause them to start manifesting their energy, and then they just draw on the magic in the air to be able to produce their effects. I almost wonder if you could use one of those and weapon or some kind, kind of conduct it. Although I don't know, I ain't no magic man. Hmm. We've tried it with lightning melts before, but you have to be careful. Holding the sword itself could potentially cause you to be electrocuted if it's not insulated well enough. Alright. Lightning runs both ways. Yep. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess I could bring that up with a couple people I know who know a bit more about magic than I do. Mm. I do, at least. Indeed. Yep. If you want a tour and start showing me how you make that thing, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Start drawing up some plans and start working on some pieces. Alright. Well, while you do that, Brimstone, could I borrow the uh, frost crystal seed? Yeah. Just gonna take it out and hand it off to him. <laughs> like, like mentally, contemplating throwing it. Not sure how well that'll survive an impact. Just hand it off. Yeah, you hand him the small, like, inch-by-inch inch, tiny crystal. Mm-hmm. Mm. This individual just essentially brings out some blue, uh, some blue, uh... Blueprint paper. Yeah, blueprint paper. I always forget if it has a proper name other than just blueprint paper. I don't think... I, if it does, I don't know it. I think the only other proper name we could have would probably be just drafting paper. Drafting paper. That is actually what it's called. That's what okay. I was trying to remember, but I couldn't remember the word drafting. He just brings out some drafting paper and some chalk, and you start working on it. Mm -hmm. Basically, how he basically is talking you through the uses of these devices and how you would need to have the various diameters and machine work done to get these things to work. Right. So while you're talking to him and starting to plan out how you could potentially... I'm assuming you're wanting to get your rifle remade. Yeah. It sounds like the Vinci and Motogun intend to step away for a bit. Yep. Yeah. Well, the... <clears throat> no... Well, they're going about that. Uh, how about you and I uh, continue exploring the area? Yeah, that sounds good. 
I'm curious about stopping by that crystal smith. That way you asked. If you don't mind. I don't mind. That way you asked Brimstone for the seed crystal. Yes. Point of order. As you all are making your way to the position of the crystal smith, something catches your eye, Mortigan. Oh. Down an alley, off to the side of where you all are walking along, you feel a weird pull as your eyes turn to look down it. And you see as someone walks from seemingly out of a wall holding a gently glowing blue bottle that they quickly tuck into a bag on their side. She just stops right in her tracks. Marken? see the individual quickly glances around seems to be satisfied with no one having noticed what just happened and starts hurriedly walking away down the alley away from your two's position is uh... Uh, Derinche is going to just kind of straighten himself up. Is something the matter, dear? <laughs> so, what? Uh, sorry, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know if... <laughs> is something the, the matter I didn't... Very quietly in Infernal, she'll just, like, she'll lean over and very quietly in Infernal listen to him. I saw someone buying that fey liquor stuff. It's called Aether. Sorry, I, I can never remember it. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's Aether. Yeah, it's just, I saw someone buying Aether. I... I see. And she'll just very... She'll just... The guy who did it is gone now, right? Uh, you, you watch as he disappears down another bending alley. Yeah, so she'll just point out the alley that he was in. That alley right there. Oh, no. Take care not to point. Mustn't make a scene. True, although... Given what we were told when we first came in here, we probably ought to make some time today to report that. That... Could either report it, or investigate. Whichever you wish. If the man doing that had been familiar looking, I'd want to investigate it myself, but... Couldn't tell him apart I'd give you anything. leads. Yeah, well, Let's go check out this crystal forge first. Understood. Yeah, you just mentally note where you saw that individual walk out of the wall. Mm -hmm. And continue on for the moment. Mm -hmm. The Crystal Forge doesn't take terribly long to find. Uh, it stands out mostly just because there are many colorful wind chime like crystals hanging out the front of the building. That as the breeze does blow through 
on this nice autumn day. They do just gently tinkle and make a peaceful ringing sound. Uh, is there anyone uh, in sight at the moment? Uh, this is an actual enclosed building. This is not like the ah. blacksmith shop where there's like an open air, open air shop. The mm. will will uh, uh, see the shop. Ah, there must be. Certainly do. They certainly do have their decor in place. Oh, yeah. And uh, Da Vinci is going to go and en enter the shop. All right. Stepping inside. The inside of this location looks a little bit like a mad scientist lair. Perfect. Yes. With various uh, alchemical devices set up scattered around the room. Uh, crystals hanging around everywhere. It's like the it's like a combination of a like a um a knick-knack witch hut mixed with a mad scientist laboratory. You just see crystal objects hanging around everywhere in this place and just alchemical devices just strewn about the front room you've entered into. You currently see a individual who looks like a a very older human, which is a bit odd. You don't see terribly many humans walking around this area. But just an older human with white hair that is shot out around his head. He's completely bald on the top of his head, but the white hair is trying to make up for it, looking like a cloud around his ears and the back of his head as he's currently very gently trying to pour a single drop from one beaker into another beaker. Hello, Dr. Wiley. <laughs> Dr. Wally? I mean, Dr. Wiley's hairstyle is actually pretty on point for this guy. We, 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 we gotta find the energy crystals, Mega Man. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> See, my mind goes to Doc Brown and Grandpa Pickles. Uh. As the door opens, the vial tips slightly too far forward, and he just goes, <gasps> Oh no. <laughs> takes off his mm. goggles. The only part of his face that's not black is just the ring of it, ring around his eyes. Can I help you? My apologies. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, it's fine. Go ahead. Come in. Come in. Come in. Vinci shall enter uh, enter in uh, Greetings. Hope you're having a good day. Well, I was having a good day until you just ruined my attempt to make bubblegum. Again, apologies about that. I, I was coming by to see if I could ask a few questions as well as get to see a bit more of a of crystal manipulation trade. Or crystal smithing trade. Well, you've come to the right place. Uh, give me one moment. And he pulls up this, like, lab coat type outfit he's wearing and just wipes his face off on it. Leaves, like, just streaks of clean, quote unquote, cleanness behind and just makes, like, a giant sooty smear on his coat, which just joins with the other many sooty smears on his coat. This seems to be a common occurrence. All right, all right. You had questions, questions about curiosities, questions about crystals. Yes. Uh, you see, my companions and I have been traveling around in various places, and 
<laughs> and so on one of our first adventures, we end up happening across this. And it'll pull out the frost uh, seed crystal. He oh. like pulls out a tiny monocle that then extends forwards. Like one of the and, jeweler's eyepieces. And he'll place it down on whatever counter there is. I mean, he's, he's like standing in front of a table. There's like a countertop between you guys. Yeah. No. All right. Let's take a look here. No, I, I, if I recall correctly, uh, this is a seed crystal for growing frost crystals. Yes, you you right here have a have a small glacial core seedling. Very fascinating, very fascinating gemstone. This one, very fascinating indeed. Are you aware of the properties of such a thing? I uh, unfortunately am not. I I know that they can be used to grow more crystals, but I'm uh, not uh, fully aware of the process of doing such. Otherwise, we'll try growing it. All right then. All right then. If you'd be curious about growing this, I can actually offer that service to you. It would take a little bit of time to fully grow it into its proper size so it could be harvested and used for purposes of crafting or other such potential machinations. Is that what something you'd be interested in? That, uh, that certainly is something I'm interested in, but I would love to hear your knowledge about this. No, my knowledge, my knowledge about what it could potentially be used to craft for, its potential magical ramifications, what it could be used for in general, and just how pretty it might be. You look like a type of person who values beauty over some some more materialistic purposes. He like looks up with you, looks up at you with the jeweler's eyes still on. It zooms <laughs> in slightly further. He's doing that thing where he's like pinching it with his with his eyebrow and his cheek so it stays on his face even without his hand. Yes, uh, I'm I myself am a jeweler by trade, so beauty is part of the business. Mm, indeed, indeed. Well, I can tell you right now that this would be a very beautiful gemstone when fully grown, assuming it can be grown without any potential difficulties, which unfortunately there's always a potential margin for error when growing gemstones. It is a, is a bit of an archaic science that we are still getting full grasp upon. Indeed. But, but so could you put it, please elaborate more on these properties you mentioned? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, glacial core gemstones, when fully when fully grown to their proper size, have a potentiality of being able to be harvested to produce ice ice type effects as part of the name glacial core. Uh, some such effects would be the equivalency thereof of being able to chill surfaces. Being stored inside of such an ice box could keep the game cool for a very long period of time. It would actually never become warm as long as you don't expose it to the opposite element, thus creating an arcane interaction, which would cause probably some form of explosion, steam or the like, you know how it goes. Ah, lovely arcane interactions. Uh, otherwise, you could be you could split it apart into its component pieces, being water and wind, if that be something of interest to you. Uh, other hmm. potential properties. Uh, obviously, you could freeze things with it. If you'd, if you'd want to make an enchanted item with it, it could imbue a weapon with frost-like energy making anything it cuts into burn with how cold it is. You know how it goes. Frostburn. Ah, terrible thing, terrible thing, Frostburn. Yeah. Never like when you get frostbite, huh? No. No, I... I took a trip to the Jaloon Tundra once. Spent all of... One? Two days up there and, uh, Joined the next caravan back out. Mmm, fair, fair. You, and then you've probably experienced a little bit of frostbite on your toesies. Yes, definitely a painful experience. Very effective on making sure people don't want to fight you. If you stab them with a knife that freezes their skin, they're just like, mm, no, thank you. He'll, uh, he'll also pull, he'll pull out uh, the flame tongue. Yes, uh, such uh, be as careful, they... Be careful, he puts his hands over top the seedling. Right, he'll put it away. Yes, if you expose those two magics to each other, there's a high likelihood they could explode. Fair enough. Uh, good thing I did never let these two get too close. 
Hmm. I mean, as, as it is as a seedling, it's less likely, but if you were to have it as its full-grown state without properly containing the magic within some form of enchantment or, or device, it would probably be much more likely to cause it to happen. So and what are the the... Hmm? Sorry. Hmm. And, and what are the services that you offer for this seedling? Well, obviously I could grow it for you, potentially grow more than one gemstone out of it, though that's a bit subjective to the actual quality of the stone. I'd have to analyze this one in a bit more detail. It looks to be of a fairly decent quality, though I'd have to properly uh, analyze it, see how many can be grown from it. Unfortunately, it's an unlimited amount. I might be able to produce another seedling from it if it's even of a high enough quality. Though, unfortunately, the more seedlings be produced via unnatural means, it slowly degrades the quality of the stone overall. But you get more gemstones out of it. Depends on if you want them for more of a, more of a, um, arbitrary purposes. Eh, still. Basically, the pure it is, the more powerful it is, the more you grow from it, it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, and weaker yeah, until it eventually just stops working altogether and you just get a pretty rock. But anyways, what I can do with this one is have it be grown to its full size, assess its quality, grow, f grow from the potential number of gemstones it can grow, tell you what exactly those gemstones are, potentially split it, split it apart into its component elements, if that is something you'd be interested in. And offer rudimentary services for helping you actually enchant items with it, if that's something you'd also be interested in. If you have baseline magical items you think could hold its, its potential magical properties. Hmm. Mm. All of those services are... Mm. Very intriguing. I also make bubblegum. Some of it doesn't explode. The ice oh. element is mint flavor. Uh, the... And what other uh, services do you offer? I imagine you don't always have someone coming in with uh, a seedling coming through your door. That happens more often than you think, actually. These aren't terribly uncommon when you start digging into crystal crystallium ores. You used to actually get quite a few of these pulled out. People up to the north typically mine these things. Pro from the Jaloon Tundra into the mountains there. And you actually see quite a few of these coming through potential sources, I guess, as a trade hub. Uh, other services I offer, though, I mean, I'm an enchanter by... I can be an enchanter by trade, usually dealing with different gemstones and such. I can actually disenchant items for you or potentially remove curses from you if you find yourself embedded with a curse. <gasps> Otherwise, I can actually just make raw items for you out of gemstone if you find yourself so in need of such a thing. Hmm. I have found another gemstone that that does contain a magic in it. Then he's gonna hold out the red corund uh, corundum elemental gem. Oh, now this is fascinating. That is an imprisonment stone. An imprisonment stone? Yes, yeah, a bit of an old bit of magic, that one, that we're still trying to properly replicate in this day and age. The ones that exist are quite useful because they can channel magical properties into any physical item they're embedded into. And... Ah, and it just depends on the actual craftsman of what that magical property is. It's a bit like how these gemstones, and he picks up and show, and basically is showing the small uh, frost seedling stone again. These ones are a very rudimental, rudimentary and natural version of what that stone is. That is a bit of old uh. magic artificially using, artificially and somewhat naturally replicating the effects of these stones on a much larger scale being able to enchant gemstones by imprisoning within them the actual elemental forces of an arcane being. Typically a raw, mindless version of an elemental, like a Ganassi or something of that nature. Or just a pure elemental. Indeed. Do you think that this could be made of any use? I mean, I believe it could be made of many uses. It just depends on what you want to do with it. 
the size of that one, it would have to be embedded in something fairly large if you're more interested in something like that. I mean, are you a fan of flame throwers? I do know a few people who would definitely be interested. You could probably do something like that, or I could chip it apart and turn it into um, uh, fireball beads. That might be something of interest to you. Though that would obviously destroy it in the process. It could potentially produce quite a few of those of those beads containing... I assume you know what the fireball spell is. You look like you might be of a bit of an adventuring sort. I... I do. I am aware of it. Good. Big flamey boom boom. Otherwise, I could turn into some kind of arcane thrower type weapon. I mentioned a flamethrower before, but it could also be used to lob molten uh, projectiles at things. Or potentially we could unchain and see if we can actually cause the elemental stored within that to obey your commands. Now that's a bit more of a risk and inherently can cause the elemental to break free utterly and we simply have to destroy it because it could not be recontained. Hmm. All of those are exquisite options. Yes. It's also it's also only scratching the surface of what I could do with it. Frankly, I'm just giving you what is popping into my head right away. Hmm. Well, for for certain, I shall pay, do which to pay you for your services in growing that seedling. Very well, very well. And uh, is there a charge if I were to say leave this uh, this gem with you and you and have you uh, get a better idea of what can be done with it? The frost one or the fire one? Both. Hmm. Well, there is an assessment charge. Well, I'll let you know right now. Growing growing the stone by itself before we figure out anything you'd want to do with it, you, given the fact that the materials I have to use to, to conduct the process, probably take about three days and also would run you, just material cost alone, would run you about mm, 100 gold. Okay. And He's just assessment... gonna... Sorry. Yes. And the assessment charge for the other stone, that would be 50 gold. Uh, Durinche is just going to pull out his uh, coin pouch and just make a nice clean stack of 15 platinum. Mmm. Now you are an individual that I find myself enjoying the company of. Very well. I will get to work right away on assessing this stone and keeping them far apart from each other. He says as he holds them both at arm's length away from each other. And growing this one. Uh, if you want to come sir. back in three days' time, and I can, I can give you a proper assessment of everything that potentially they can be done with. Much appreciated. Oh, and can I buy some bubblegum? Mm, of course. <laughs> Do you actually want to buy bubblegum? Yes, he'll buy uh, a bit of bubblegum. All right. They're little balls of bubblegum. You can get ten of them for one gold. You will pay one gold to get ten bubble balls of bubblegum. All righty then. Oh, whenever you chew those, by the way, when you blow a bubble with them, uh, be careful. Uh, make sure there's ground underneath you after a little bit. Hmm. He does not elaborate further. Okay, note to self. Uh, and potentially whoever he gives these to. Blow bubbles <laughs> while on the ground. No, he said... 
after you blow a bubble, after a while, make sure there's ground underneath you. Right, yes. Stay on the ground. Mm. I will tell you what this does for the sake of record keeping proper. Uh, whenever you consume a piece of this bubble gum and blow a bubble with it, you, uh, you have the mechanical effects of the levitation spell cast on you. Ooh! However, whenever you do this, you need to roll a percentile dice. If you roll below 25%, uh, it does not work, and something weird happens. He did say some of them don't explode. Yeah, you did see he was mixing together and making it, and it exploded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so just note that down, that they they have a 25% chance of not working properly. This is going to be interesting. All right. What if Hitler and Hitler feeding it to Failsy? Because <laughs> she you. would. Does this smell like chloroform? <laughs> I don't know, I bet, I stopped, chloroform stopped affecting me a long time ago. This one's mint flavored. This one tastes like ricin. Ricin doesn't taste like anything. Exactly. Mm. How do you know no, what that was... tastes like? A lot of trial and error. A lot the... Of trial and error. The idea was actually to buy candy for Keta because <laughs> you could use some candy, but now it's like. Do I really want to risk giving the tiny child these? Explosive bubblegum. Potentially explosive bubblegum. <laughs> Up to you. But we're at 11 now. So as you hand over your coin to him. And potentially think about going and reporting what you saw. And the other members of the party prance about in their new fancy shoes and nice robes. And I do what I do best. Build gun. Yeah, and Brimstone has a bro date. Fuck yeah! That's where we're gonna I like end this off guy. tonight. He's not a judgmental asshole because I have iron in my arm. No, he's just he's just like, oh, you're making something cool? I'll help with that. You're making something cool? Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bud. Let's do it. Yeah. So yeah, that is where we're gonna end off for tonight. <coughs> yeah. I'm dying. I'm dying, Piglet. <laughs> You're fine. You have He's to pull the trigger, Piglet. He's just coughing. You are turning into a Pokemon. You're not dying. If oh, I turned man. into a coughing, I would probably dead. Oh man, I'm gonna turn into everyone's favorite Pokemon. Mimikyu? No, that I'm is not a lot that of people's cute. favorite Pokemon. Alright. Led the Rab. Okay, so does anybody have anything they wanna shout out, promote, or announce? I'm gonna I... become the Pokemon. Drink your fizzy lifting drinks. Hi, that's me. I have something I'd like to promote. Alrighty, let's hear it. Promote. Uh, so, um, I, like last week, I'd like to promote my friend Willie's Earth Girl on Twitter. He is an amazing artist. His commissions are open. He um, he has done some amazing art for some of my D&D characters. Uh, he's absolutely just lovely to work with. And I recommend that if you need art to be done for a character, you go to him just because it is... <laughs> um, he also is just funny too. <laughs> Bees. 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 It was it the bees? 
Uh. Yes, that is what I have to run. <laughs> Light noon. Uh, I don't have anything to shout out at this moment. No. Same. Me not have nothing. <laughs> Dying. I'm good. Stop it. I can't help it. Stop it. <laughs> I've killed. Stop it. Dying starts with a bad attitude. Yeah, that one. I'm dying. To Eugene Simmons because he have long tongue and look like glam rock. I wouldn't define Gene Simmons as looking like Glamrock, but fair enough. No, he looked—he looked like Kiss. <laughs> That's Gene Simmons. I don't fair. know if you're thinking of Gene Simmons or Richard Simmons. I am not thinking of Richard Simmons. Anyways, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, if people who joined in and I saw that there were a couple of people in the chat tonight. We are glad to have you. And if you want to join us again next time for what happens next in Scattered Realms, we'll just see, which I I feel like the next session's probably still going to be chill, but we're probably going to get some more plot progression. It just feels like that's naturally what's going to happen. There's some stuff going on that probably will lead us down the way of plot. Yee. But yes, if you want to join us uh, to find out what happens next... You can do so on this same channel. Most, if not all, we're... we're I, I say most because, you know, scheduling conflicts happen and we can't make a Saturday, so... Most we're not professional streamers. Yeah. But yeah, most Saturdays you can find this lovely group here on this channel at or around 8 p.m. EST. We were pretty damn close to that actual time tonight. I feel proud of that. About 8.30, but ye. Ye. Yeah, you... Check, start checking in around 8 eight p.m. EST on this channel on Saturdays. And for more Scattered Realms. And if you like the same crew, but once you want something a little more modern day and a little more just wonderful ADHD madness, <laughs> you can join us on most Thursdays at or around 7 p.m. EST for Project Ada. And that is A-D-A. -A. I'm sorry, Ash. <laughs> I just said, I also DM that one. Yes. I, D I DM them all. I'm the one who DMs. Well, I mean, Armor tried to give you a break from the DM chair on Sundays and you just were like, no, give it back. I mean, it's not quite what happened, but yeah. It's a funny way of saying what happened. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And I think with that, uh, we should all just say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. But, yes. Good night, everybody. We'll see you when we see you next. Time to get drunk. Bye-bye. Uh